Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Between Two Consultants. I'm Nicholas Kelly. And I'm Ethan Silvers. And today we're talking about the industry that won't innovate. And to do that, we're very lucky to have Bart with us. So Bart, could you give us a real quick two hour introduction about yourself, please? Sure, uh, Nick, thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm Bart. Um, working for the pharmaceutical in industry, uh, working for Roche in Switzerland and have a background in operational excellence, Lean Six Sigma. Awesome. That quick enough? Th that's great. Thanks, uh, thanks for oh, jumping on, on the show. On. We, we have one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds left for your introduction. Great. Or we'll yeah, just that's, move to the next question. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I think we'll move to the next question. Um, Again, again, Ethan, setting the bar as low as possible. Thank you for doing that. So, Bart, uh, I'm sure we're we're all wondering, and uh, especially Ethan, because he's usually not clued into the topic of the show. What is the industry that won't innovate? Yeah, who who's Ethan, by the way? Oh, that's me. Okay. Yeah, who, who um, are any of us, Bart? Ultimately, great question. So. Um, this topic came about when I was asked by a, a large vendor uh, to this, to the life science industry, to be on a forum to talk about innovation uh, in product development, in clinical development. And my reaction was, well, what innovation have we seen? I started to realize that we don't really innovate or take on the innovation that we see in other industries. So if you if you look how we work, it's basically the same that um, clinical research, which I'm focusing on, was done since the 60s, 70s. Many of the processes are basically the same. So that's why the topic came up. Why doesn't why doesn't this industry um, innovate? There is a lot to gain. It's, it's quite expensive to develop a drug. There's a lot to gain in time and in, in resource savings. But at the same time, we don't seem to uh, embrace innovation. Uh, so Ethan, I'll, uh, before you con continue with the next question, I just want to say mm -hmm. uh, and, and put to you, what is it like for someone who, who hasn't innovated in um, a good 30, 40, 50, 60 years like yourself? Yeah, well, um, Nick, I don't know if they have this saying um, from where you're from in Wales, um, but uh, don't don't fix what ain't broke. So I have a, you know, let's let's keep let's keep, let's keep going with what's working. What I what I'd also like to share, just as I'm and as you're getting prepared, the next question, but don't don't answer it right away, Bart, because there's something else I want to say. And the question is, in what specific ways has healthcare not innovated? But um, you know, I've noticed that like we're really making our way across Europe in terms of how this, uh, how between two consultants is structured. We have Nick, who we just mentioned from Wales. We brought on folks from Eastern Europe, and now we have uh, Bart um, from uh, the. Well, actually, I won't say. Nick, can you pick up uh, from Bart Bart's accent where he's from? Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I, you know, Bart, I don't know you, but I'm going to, I have a very keen awareness of accents. Um, so I'm going to guess Nederlands, uh, probably the Amps area around Amsterdam with, and I'm picking up like a hint of Indianapolis with some Switzerland mixed in there. Uh, excellent, uh, Ethan. I uh, see. Pretty good. But it, but it's, right. it is actually Germany, right, Bart? Uh, no, uh, Nicholas. Do you, do you know where it is? Germany. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just uh, just just near Europe there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just south of Italy. Yeah. Um, in in what specific ways, Bart, has healthcare not innovated? Um, yeah. So so you now bring it to to healthcare. Um, healthcare in general, you see that there's a lack of of. Uh, data information exchange. So if you if you go to, you know, Nick, if you would go to Germany, you can use your bank card and you can, you know, you could put it in any machine, uh, ATM, 
and it knows if you have enough money that you can get money out and immediately it um, calculates how much you have left. With healthcare, that doesn't work. If you go across the street to the a, a different practitioner or a different hospital, they have no clue who you are, what your um, what your condition is. So the third um, cause of death is medical mistakes. So there you see an underlying problem with data sharing, data interoperability. Where I focus on is on clinical research or clinical development. And there you see that we have very old processes. We, uh, for instance, we send people to check on doctors who do research for us. Um, we send people with planes, with um, trains or with cars to, to go check what they typed into the systems for us. So very old practices and, and not much innovation. Well, so it's interesting that you brought up basically botched healthcare leads to um, death, um, lack of information. You can see um, uh, my co-host has had several botched up botched uh, things going on with his operations in medical care. Um, and so, uh, 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 Bart, um, why do you think it is whether, you know, healthcare, if you want to get more specific around um, uh, the uh, clinical um, testing trials, um, why why is it that innovation isn't there? When it, it, it sort of feels like, hey, this is something that we really do want to be innovative about. Right, right. Yeah, that that's very difficult. Um, and a lot of a lot of people say, well, it's because of big, you know, the large margins. Um, there's there's no price pressure. Uh, there's no there's no real pain, and um, cool. you know, the industry makes too much money. I think that's too easy. I think there are a lot of a lot of reasons. First of all, there's a lot of investment into innovation on the medical side, where actually the the results are spectacular. And um, it probably then is very difficult to say, okay, we also have to, to innovate elsewhere, things that are not our core and uh, not our core interest. So, so the other thing is uh, we're heavily regulated and a lot, of, a lot of ideas get put down because people say, oh, you know, the regulators won't like it or it will be a risk. Let, let somebody else try it. Um, so that, that plays a big part although the regulators mostly are very open to innovation. Oh. Um, another part is our customers are not in a position or often not in the mindset to demand it. So they are in a situation of duress, stress, and are looking for a, a treatment. Uh, they they want to get out of the situation. So it's different than in other industries where customers are very demanding. Um, what really surprises me is our vendors are, especially IT vendors, are not really coming up with a lot of innovation. Mm -hmm. And if I hear them talk about what they do in other industries, I think, well, that's that's really moving, moving them forward, changing things where our vendors really stay very close to, to how we work. How much do you think is just like the stakes are so high? Right, like we have other regulated industries like healthcare, where now you know right. fintech has been coming on, but the stakes are high, right? It's life and death. So, how much do you think is because of that? Um, it's certainly it, it's certainly used as as a reason. Uh, let let's stay safe. Let's stay, you know, on on the on the safe side and not risk anything, which I think is a too easy um, way of thinking about it. Yeah. Actually, if, if you're in need of new medication, you want you want innovation. You want it to come quicker. You want to that we move and not take take ages. Uh, Nick, what direction should we go in? Well, I I was uh, picking up there, Bart. One of the things you were saying was the there's the uh, obviously the high cost. There's the um, you know focus on researching products that are going to sell or that have an immediate market are there as as kind of like barriers to innovation but are there examples you have of 
where innovation has worked in healthcare that you know it has been able to move at a certain speed and and you know obviously it's it's not a wholesale thing but are there any cases you could highlight where there has been innovation sure the, the innovation is of course in 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 the medical area diagnostics uh, medical devices uh, medications there's a lot of innovation there um, where it's really missing i think is in the digital space um, new ways of working um, we we go digital, but we don't really take that as a chance to, to change. So if you look at our systems, it's EDC, ECRF, it's uh, ECTD, it's um, e-consent. We, we put an E for everything. We make it digital. And if you, um, if you take a bad process and you, you make it digital, you get a faster bad process. And sometimes I think the the gain is negative, that in the end, because you speed it up, you cause all sorts of new problems. And in the end, it probably will take longer or cost more resources. It's interesting about putting the E, because we're thinking of making Nick and myself purely digital, and we'll be E Nick and E Ethan. Yeah, it's not always bad. I think that could work. <laughs> yeah, but two E's, two E's at the start of your name. It's like it's, E. Yeah, and... yeah it's, you can just like make it a long E, right? E thin. Yeah. Yeah. I should maybe want or to think about that. Could, could be good. Maybe, maybe we should E silver. Yeah, that's good. Or we could go the Apple route and put an I in front of our names. I Nick. I Ethan. Ah, yeah, something but... to think about. So, yeah. So good. Yeah. Looking forward to those uh, to those comments on this highly controversial topic. Um, so uh, it's. One of the things that I'm finding very interesting, right, you, uh, Bart, you brought up about obviously this whole thing is about innovation and the industry that won't innovate. <clears throat> There's two things that have come up. So when I think about innovation, there is things like precision healthcare, which I, I feel like is a, you know a, a fairly hot topic and it feels like it has legs to it. And then there's also we've just had what feels to me like this incredible wave of innovation with getting COVID-19 vaccines out there really quickly. Um, so how do you square that with your uh, hypothesis of right. innovation? Right. So um, you live in San Francisco, right? So I do. If, if, if during um, the crisis, you would have driven to work, um, you probably would have been much faster than you normally are. Yeah. There were, was no traffic jam. Probably the, the the lights were off. The traffic lights were off. Um, so if now you would go back to the office, everybody goes back and they say, "Well, Ethan took half the time to get to work. Let's all do that." It won't work. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of the same situation here. Uh, we a lot of research was stopped. All the focus was moved to the fact signs, um, and. And then it's not that surprising it goes faster. Um, if people say, well, actually, there was, there were better ways and we did it better, I think our patients and our stakeholders should be very, shareholders should be very uh, annoyed because that means we did something we could have done a long time. So why didn't we do it? Um, at the same time, I see that there is a certain uh, selectiveness in our interest for what went faster. The Russians were first with the vaccine and nobody seems interested why they were so incredibly fast. Uh, we first laughed at them like, oh, Sputnik can't be anything. Now it seems that it's on par with uh, the Western vaccines, but nobody seems really interested how they did it. So I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, somewhat convoluted discussion about the fastness we have seen now. I wasn't, I, I didn't think the conversation would go this way, but I, do we have any insight into how Russia was able to uh, so quickly develop a vaccine? Well, I haven't been able to find any analyzers yet. Um, mm -hmm. What I've seen is a lot of disdain, like first we laughed about it, um, now that they, proven to be very, um, to have a good vaccine. It's quite quiet. I see that happening a lot. Everything that not doesn't come from, 
from Europe or from the U.S. is sort of discarded. Yeah. Uh, Nick, um, uh, over to you for the next uh, question or two. Well, I was wondering, Bart, like the you were talking about, like where the innovation needs to happen in the digital realm, uh, you know, across like sharing data, you know, across different hospitals, different companies, maybe. Do you see any innovation in that space on the horizon at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think the a lot of innovation is currently happening in the crypto uh, blockchain space. So decentralized networks, decentralized data, I think is is going to really disrupt um, for the better, and um, we'll we'll see a lot of change coming through that area. That's really interesting, Bart. Um, and also, this isn't financial advice, um, but the, the the good wife and I have been buying up some of the uh, cryptocurrencies. It's a it's a real hot area. But then also, I wonder if healthcare goes that way, will it end up getting regulated again? You know, like the we take the financial system, you know, and say, okay, well, it's centralized right now. I'm you know, I'm sure, like any any system that is centralized isn't going to be too keen to give up the control uh, of that system. And so the decentralization is clearly a threat. So regulation could centralize the decentralization or at least mute the, the gains or tax the gains or whatever it is. Do you see the similar risk for healthcare? Um, yes. So, so if you look at the, at the crypto space, there, there's some, some of the um, coins or some of the networks or um, that are that are well regulated some are less regulated um, and that's going to be where we're going to choose who's going to work together collaborate with what innovation if you see um, in, in the supply chain space that big companies are already working with some of these um, networks or companies and um, others aren't so I think that will regulate itself. That's the, that's the nice thing about it, um, that people will put their data where they get real assurance that it's used in a good way, and they can decide what happens with their data. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. That's really interesting. I, I think it's going to be a, a topic we should be diving into in another session as well, Bart, if, if you're game. I, it, it's such a rich and interesting area, talking about innovation in that space. Um, Ethan, I'll, I'll pass it over to yourself. Thank you. So I, I think we're getting ready to, uh, to end this very special segment. But before we do, Bart, um, is there anything um, about this topic that we haven't covered that would be valuable, valuable to bring up? I think there are lo there's lots, lots to explore in this topic. I, I, yeah, I think there were some, some good areas. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, depending on the comments we get, which I'm, I have no doubt will be all positive, you know, maybe some improvement suggestions for my co-host. But outside of that, looking forward to the uh, comments that we get and uh, thinking about what the next topic um, that we'll bring Bart on, whether it's cryptocurrency or a more of a deep dive into this topic. Um, Bart, thank you so much for being on uh, being on the show with us. It was great uh, being between two consultants. <laughs> so thank you to all of our millions of viewers. Appreciate you being on. My name is Ethan Silvers. I'm Nicholas Kelly. Thanks for joining us on Between Two Consultants. Be good. Thank you. Thank you.